you know, um, <laughs> I was thinking, right? You know why marriage, um, let me say it this way. Here's what, here's what I've discovered. I was thinking about this this weekend. Marriage goes sideways or marriage is difficult a lot of times because mm-hmm. people can't do, I mean, they can, but it's like they can't. They're not prepared to do life and marriage at the same time. Isn't that crazy? Like, we do life all the time. But when folk get married, it's like at the altar we forget. We're getting married, but it's not we're signing up for something different other than life. Here's what I mean. When, when, when we decide to get married, why, why are we getting married? We're thinking about uh, the fun we're going to have together. We're thinking about uh, we love each other. We're going to have fun. We're going to go on vacations. And because we're human, we know we're not perfect. So, yeah, we're going to have we're going to have a little we're going to have little spats and um, we're going to have to resolve conflict. But ultimately, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> Think about it. Why would people continue to get married if they did not believe it was going to be amazing? When you got married, you thought it was going to be so amazing. Present company included. I did too. But here's what we did not consider. So at the altar, just imagine being at the altar. Or or not just at the altar, but, you know, when you're thinking about the person you're going to marry. What you're not thinking about is uh, when one of you lose your job. Or when someone leaves their job and now they can't find another one. Or, you know, your, your child needing braces. Or, man, y'all start having children and now one of them is autistic. Or you have children and you wasn't planning on it. Y'all have triplets. Right. So what does that mean? So our romantic relationship is one thing, but now we got to do life. So we bought this house, but now because of the market, the, 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 the taxes and everything, the mortgage has gone sky high. Let's say the mortgage has doubled. We was paying twelve hundred dollars when we got married. Now, three years later, we're paying three thousand dollars for the mortgage. Not only that, uh, the let's say let, this is a scenario I'm making up. Right. Uh, so. So the mortgage is three thousand dollars from twelve hundred from just two years ago. Uh, the husband is now working eighty hours a week. We didn't plan for that when we said we was gonna get married. So the husband planning eighty hours a week. So he doesn't have quality time to give to the wife. So the thing that he wants more now to relax is he wants more sex, but because she feels neglected, she's not really trying to do that because she's taking care of these twins. And she's never been a mom before. And so not only has she not ever been a mom, but right off the bat, she jumps and she has two. And she has to do it mostly by herself because the husband has to work so he can make the money. How how y'all going to do romance in that? I'm not saying that it's impossible. What I'm saying is we don't prepare for that. And so then when when, when the issues of marriage start to show up, what are the issues? I don't know how to communicate. I'm immature. Right. I got childhood issues. So then that stuff comes in and we cannot resolve issues because we're so focused on uh, what you are giving me. I'm so focused on you loving me. I don't know if this mic gonna work. I'm really testing out this mic. That's why I'm doing this live. If I I could just be honest. But I don't think I like it right here. If you all you notice, it's normally on this side. But today I was trying to do something different, but it's not. I don't think it's going to work because my hand, I talk with this hand. I keep almost hitting the mic. But anyway, back to what I'm saying. We focus more on what I'm getting than what I'm giving. And I tell you all the time, when you do that, you're going to hurt yourself. Okay. Uh, marriage. Here, here's another. Here's the second part of that. We, we, we can't do love and life at the same time. We humans are so fantastical in our thinking. We think we can do things we can't, and then we think we can't do things that we can. For example, we think um, that we can have no training in marriage, never have had a successful relationship ever, but we think we can get married to an amazing man, and then because he's amazing, but I'm whatever I am, it's going to be great. Or vice versa. This brother ain't never been in a healthy relationship. He's never been able to communicate. But he meets somebody, and she's an amazing communicator. And so we get married. 
we think, oh, when I marry him, then he's going to automatically know how to be a husband. When I marry her, she's going to automatically know how to be a wife. Not true, right? And then the things that we think we can't do, which we absolutely can, something as simple, I shouldn't say simple, something like changing your life, something like discovering who you truly are, something like healing your childhood stuff. You can do that, but that's stuff we think we can't do. But what we think we can do, we you can't just show up. Just because you get the title of husband does not mean you know how to perform in the role that you've signed up for. You need some training. So we don't know how to do love in life. Here's the other thing. And I've said this before. We, so uh, let me say it this way. Romeo must die. I'm going to say that again. Romeo must die. Particularly in America. Because I have not lived anywhere else. I haven't lived anywhere else. But in America, we are too hyper-focused. I know that's a double. Is there such thing as a double positive? We're too hyper-focused. I'm going to say it anyway. We're too hyper-focused. Can you be not so hyper-focused? No. We're hyper-focused. <laughs> We're hyper focused on romance. Guys, you're going to hurt yourself. Like, I had another conversation. I had a conversation today with a young man, and he was telling me about a relationship that he used to be in. And, and the young lady, he was saying how, you know, her issue was he wasn't speaking his love language. You know, I want words of affirmation. And then he said he tried to do that. You know, he, he gave us some words of affirmation. And when he told me, I'm like, yeah, those are words of affirmation. But she was like, well, I guess they are, but I really was hoping for this. Because when you say this, then it makes me feel loved. Now, I ain't making this up. That's what he said. Here's the thing. Most of y'all like that. You want to feel loved. And I listen, I'm not, I'm not anti-feelings. I'm a human being. I like feeling good too. But you cannot make how you feel the ultimate thing because there are too many things that can change how you feel. And, and so here's what I told the guy when I, when I was talking to him earlier today, I said, uh, uh, I don't feel God's love 24 seven. I said, matter of fact, while I'm sitting here right now, I don't, I don't feel God's love, but I 1000% know that he loves me. Why do I have to feel it? If I know it, see, we'll do that with God. Or so we think some folk can't do it with God, but with our partner, I need you to do some stuff that excites me. That tells me you are, you, you're in love with me. The problem with that is, uh, and, and especially for now, I, I know it goes both ways, but especially for me and you, you'll have these, you'll have your husband jumping through hoops, trying to prove that he loves you. When in reality, that brother going to work every day. And, and and not and not so your husband being loyal I know y'all not gonna like this I wouldn't plan on saying this but here we go your husband being loyal yep your husband <clears throat> excuse me your husband not being in the streets your husband um, being transparent with his money your husband uh, uh, taking you out from time to time your husband doing things with and for the children that's coming from a place of love so just because you know you're not going out on enough dates or he's not, you know, flying you across the country. That stuff is, do you know you don't need love for that? Do you know how many times I flew across the country when I did not love somebody? I just met them online. Pure on, I'm gone. Nothing to do with love. You don't need love to travel. Let me tell you what you need love for. When life gets too heavy, right? When, 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 as I like to say, when life is dropping them fifth four B's on you, when, when things, when it seems like uh, life has your number and, and, and you, can't, <laughs> you can't change the number, that, that's when you need love to show up. I need, I need love to show up when I'm in need. Christ died for us because we needed a Savior, not because we, it'd be cool if I have a Savior. No, no, no. You, you need one. So why does marriage go sideways while I'm, while I'm testing this mic? Uh, number one, we can't do love and life at the same time. 
You got to fix that. Well, how can we fix that? Oh, I'm sorry. Before I give my rundown, let me tell you why we can't do love and life together. Here's why we can't do those two together. Because of our fantasies. So you showed up to marriage with these fantasies in your head about what marriage is supposed to be and what it's supposed to look like. And so if it's not working that way, then you definitely can't do love in life because the love part don't look like how you want it to look, but that's fantasy anyway. And then the life part is just overwhelming. So you don't have any relief. I don't have any, uh, uh, um, uh, I don't have any kind of anesthesia. We try to, lo- we try to use love as anesthesia to, to, to numb us from the pain of life. That's not gonna work. Okay, so so now back to my list. Why why can't we do love and life together effectively together? I mean, why do, why does marriage go sideways? Because we can't do love and life together, right? We're not we plan for we plan for marriage, but we don't plan for life. And when I say plan for marriage, I really I'm not talking about skills because we don't we don't do that part. I'm saying we 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 expect that's a better word. We expect to be in love, we expect to hear I love you's and we expect to communicate and we expect to have sex and we expect, you know, we expect all the relational things. But do you understand that life has so many expectations for you that you don't know that it has? That didn't make sense. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say. Like there are things in life that you don't expect. That's what I'm trying to say. That's going to show up on your doorstep. You say, I don't receive that. You don't have to. Like the Amazon leave packages on my door all the time. I don't got to be there to receive it. They leave it. Life is going to leave stuff on your doorstep and you're going to have to deal with it. But if you can't do love and life at the same time, guess which one's going to suffer? The marriage. And then the main thing, man, it's our fantasy. Romeo must die. Why? Because we put too much emphasis on romance. Romance and love are not the same thing. I like romance. I was, I was washing the dishes early and I was talking to myself. And I said, you know, here's one of the craziest uh, one of the craziest things, this is, this is, I think I'm using this word, right? I'm going to try to use it. Uh, enigmas <laughs> in the history of enigmas. What's that? Clifton Brantley, at least sounding anti-romance. If you really, really knew me, like if you knew me, knew me, you would know how crazy that is, but I've matured to understand romance is going to tap your marriage. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, romance is going to tear up your marriage because you think if he buy, if he's buying you flowers and if he's taking you on dates and he's doing all these things, then that means he loves you. And while at the same time, that brother is overstressed and overworked because he's trying to do all the other stuff to take care of the family and make sure that you are satisfied. Do you understand? Your life is your responsibility. Why, you, why do you need another person to make you feel good about you? What were you doing when you were single? Who was making you feel wanted when you were single? That's the same person supposed to make you feel wanted when you're in a relation. I know y'all don't like that. Oh, he making that up. No, I'm not. Keep going the way you're going. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt yourself. Romance is going to destroy your marriage. You have to divorce the fantasy in your head so that you can stay married to the stranger in your bed. One day y'all going to get that because a lot of us don't know our spouse. Do you look, am I ready to talk about how much time I got? Uh, What time is it? Uh, Okay. I got two minutes. I'm going to share my my elbows and shit. Let me get some lotion. I'm going to share this with y'all and then I'm going to let you go. So I've been a therapist by the way, I'm no longer a therapist. That's my declaration. I talk, I'll tell you about that later. Not officially, like I'm still like I'm saying in my head, that ain't who I am. Anyway, um, so so I've been doing this work for 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 over 10 years now. My lotion is out. I've been doing this work for over 10 years. And um I study the stuff that I teach. I believe I, I am. I am another thing. If you knew me, you would know I am. I am very much anti-hypocritical. Like I, I, I refuse to teach stuff I don't live or believe. Just I'm just not gonna do it. Having said that, 
let me tell you that it was, I don't remember exactly, a few weeks ago in this year, 2024, a few weeks ago, when I discovered, when I realized, when, I, when, when a light bulb came on, that, that, that the one who's been teaching you about divorcing your fantasy was still married to his. And guess what? Why, why am I telling you that? The reason I'm telling you that is because I had no clue. Zero clues. I, I had no clue that I was doing that. And I'm, I'm telling you, I had no clue while I'm teaching it and looking for it. I am actively, so I thought, divorcing my fantasy so I could stay married to my reality. But the more I mature, and the other day I was just sitting in the garage and I, I, it hit me. I said, you know what? I think I'm still married to my fantasy. And so I started writing. And sure enough, when I wrote out how, who, who, I, who I would like for my wife to be, that person does not exist. And I said, shut the front door. What? I'm only sharing that with you to say, um, if I can, you know, if, if here's the danger of pride. I've told you this. The danger of pride is that you don't know you're walking in it until destruction shows up. So if I, who studies pride and is always looking for pride, got caught up in a pride, prideful situation where I did not realize I was still married to my fantasy. How, how you can just easily, just casually just do that. And you, you, you just now learning this today. I'm trying to help you divorce your fantasy. Your reality is way more, is way better than your fantasy, but, but, you won't know that until you let the fantasy go because otherwise the fantasy is going to rule. You, it's going to rule your eyes. It's going to rule your ears. It's going to rule your thoughts. You're not going to be able to divorce the fantasy in your head so you can learn to love the stranger in your bed. Okay. All right. That's it. My mic. I think, I think we might work. I moved it. Once I moved it that second time, it's, and how does it look? Yeah, that's cool. All right. Listen, y'all take care. Um, I think I'm gonna go live again. No, I'm gonna prepare something for y'all about about um reparenting yourself. That's gonna be good. All right, y'all stay tuned and take care.